For centuries, mankind has been fascinated with realms outside of our conscious awareness. Through a series of interviews with practitioners, guest speakers, and experts, Liberate the podcast covers all that and more, from health and holistic healing to the supernatural. We aim to educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Um, so today, we have a very special treat for you. Uh, it's not every day that would I get a chance to interview one of the leading thought leaders uh, for spiritual development, uh, taking you to the next level within your spiritual journey. Uh, he's been recognized by Deepak Chopra as one of the, the leaders, writes for the Huffington Post. Even Ariana Huffington herself said that the wisdom that comes through his channels uh, is is beautiful and divine. I don't know what her exact quote is, but I mean, so today we have Shah Ram Shiva with us, and he's gonna, we're gonna see where this goes. So you know how I do this. I like to kind of see where the the interviews go. He will be here at Liberate Hollywood on December 12th doing the 12 Laws of Self-Realization, but today we're gonna explore many different topics and see where we go and what is divinely channeled. Hi, awesome. welcome. Hi, Christina, hello. Thank it's you for joining. It's my pleasure. Thank you for being here. Okay. So we got a little bit of chance to start to uh, chat a little bit while we were doing some sound check and things like that. And one of the interesting aspects that you were sharing is that uh, your work is to take the people that have a sense of uh, they already have a sense of spiritual awareness and they're really looking to take it to that next level in development and say what does this mean and how do I become more of myself or to that next level can you elaborate a little bit more on that yeah you know I don't think that the world needs another you know person telling you the benefits of meditation right yeah. um, we, we live at a time where actually science has proven that Mm -hmm. You know, we actually, and also we also live at a time when yoga has become mainstream, which Absolutely. is amazing. So uh, my work is not to tell you what you already know, it's to tell you what many of you uh, are kind of yearning to find out. Um, uh, those of you who are trying to break out of uh, the basics of spirituality, what are the basics of spirituality? Meditation, kundalini energy, um, chakras, um, vibration levels of uh, vibrations, being a little bit more aware about who you are, being aware and protective of your kind of mm -hmm. environment, your energy. So you learn all that and also somewhat maybe diet and somewhat of stretching and exercise. Uh, but then what, what comes after that? Yeah. You know, because a lot of what is really being um, put out there, whether it's via books or a variety of workshops and talks, all of that focuses only at what I call Spirituality 101, which, which is what I just described. And, um, and my work has really never been about that. Um, you know, I am one of the people who, um, in a sense, made uh, uh, Rumi known in the West. I'm very proud of that. I uh, uh, started working with Rumi when I was in my early 20s. And um, on professional level, I was published very soon. I started doing events and so forth. And I still do. I mean, I love my work with Rumi. He is my mentor. And, uh, and I learned a, uh, a lot about Rumi, which is one of the best things was that you have to constantly push the envelope mm -hmm. of personal development. You can't just say, OK, so I learned about you know, uh, the great benefits of breathing, great benefits of stretching. Um, or try to have positive mindset. I'm good, yeah. you know. And if you feel good, that's great. Meaning, if you feel like you're in a good place, that's awesome. But th there comes a time when you feel like, you know, that was so few years ago. What is out there? And unfortunately, there's not that much information. Yeah. To what feed is out you. there? What is yeah. next? Because yeah. otherwise, like if you take it into you know, an everyday digestible chunk. It's like if somebody just continues to do the same workout over and over again, well, then they're not, they're, their muscles will actually atrophy, right? You know, so you have to push yourself. You have to lift higher weights. You have to run faster. You have to do whatever. You can't just sit there. Otherwise, you're plateauing. And That's the true. plateauing will soon cause a dec decline, not a steady flat line. And unfortunately, most of the planet don't think that way. Mm 
Mm. Most of the planet um, are, as we see, unfortunately, every day, you know, through a variety of types of information that comes to us, is that they uh, very much are, they fall into uh, different types of very negative energy, very violent energy, and, and they can't get out of it. Because, yeah. uh, so I call our kind of group of people, uh, people who are um, self-aware, who constantly want to push ourselves higher, a nano percent of the population, because we're such a small group. Wow. Um, it's very easy to, to just be, to say, wow, life is so hard. Do I even have to like push myself higher? Why can't they just? Mm -hmm. Why can't they just chill for a while and just go home and, you know, binge watch whatever some yeah. TV show? And you can because there are really no rules. Ultimately, ultimately, once you get on the path of self-realization, you are your own, and your only motivator. Mm -hmm. This is the key of it. This is what people kind of. Um, they were, they're being kind of programmed not to be aware of it. They've been kind of programmed to think that, oh, I need that person to get me there, yeah. right? I need that teacher to get me there. Mm -hmm. I need that deity, that, that little you know, statue yeah. I have to bow to every day. Or that discipline or that whatever, and then, then they become you know, dependent upon a certain aspect or a certain thing instead of that can be... Yeah. A lot of the, the discipline is actually probably even harder than the other ones because that's a, that's a mind programming versus mm. a behavior programming. Um, but the only way that they're going to get out of it is if, for example, they, they watch this talk and, they, and something just goes bing in their mind and say, oh my God, it, it makes a lot of sense. Or they're going to think, it doesn't make any sense. I'm so, you know, I love what is happening around me. I love the fact that I have the security of a deity. And I love the fact that I feel that this so-and-so, you mm. know, is going to open doors for me uh, in the heaven. Or I, I love the fact that my church tells me that I'm going to do this when I... It's perfectly fine. Yeah. Because you can't... There is no force that can change that. And it really shouldn't. The process is self-awareness, self-realization, and ultimately self-guided destiny. And these are not easy, right? Because yeah. you know, if they were easy, a lot more people would be into Doing this, it. right? Of course, yeah. That's <laughs> so that's why I call nano percent of the of the population. Now, is it nano percent of the population becoming larger? Um, I yes, be, especially now. A lot of us who are here at this time. Mm -hmm. This is a very very special time. Very special time. These um, also 1960s was a very special time. It, okay. it wasn't an, an accident where we had that whole, you know, kind of an Eastern, you know, hippie yeah. flower children counterculture. I mean, movement. that's when uh, uh, Yogananda came over here into Los Angeles, right? You know, that was the birth of the modern New Age. However, New Age has failed us tremendously. It has served its purpose, but now it's become basically just candles and incense and massages and things like mm -hmm. that, which is great, but has nothing to do with, you know, with self-realization. So what it, it's, it, it purpose, its purpose, especially coming after 1950s, mm -hmm. where we're kind of, you know, at a high, um, con uh, we were conforming at a very high level in 1950s, especially because of the influence of television yeah. and all the fake families, everybody's 100% mm -hmm. perfect, you know. Uh, so this came right at a perfect time to kind of wake people up. And then it kind of gradually went away, obviously, you know, yeah. 70s was a whole different thing. And, but it gave birth to a new age. And now we are in an era that I call post-new age. Okay. And people are feeling it. And what do you exactly define as that post-New the, Age? The post, what makes it different? Yeah, the post-New Age is that I think we kind of become tapped, uh, we tapped into it. The post-New Age is you feel that there is something greater out there besides what I've been told about the basic laws of New Age, right? Mm. Uh, the New Age movement was very popular for a long time, about three decades, very popular. Music, yeah. very popular musically. I uh, started with people like Brian Eno. But even it goes back to, because um, I, you know, I do uh, music as well, it even goes back to Eric Satie about 100 years mm -hmm. ago. That was kind of really technically the birth of soothing music. And also uh, Miles Davis did a lot of very soothing music. 
uh, which is kind of so, so those three, Eric Satie, Miles Davis, and uh, Brian Eno are kind of the fathers of the New Age movement, which had a great run, uh, especially in the 80s and 90s. Um, but that obviously just because they all not sound exactly yeah. the same. So that so everything in a sense has a, there's a cyclical to, you know there's a cycle to these things, and now we're at a cycle where okay so we so so we've done all that we've kind of did the crystals and we did the um, uh, in a sense we were the kind of Lucy garbs and and mm -hmm. all that stuff. What is next? Because yeah. we have to constantly push ourselves forward. So the next is you 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 um, tap into yourself and um, and realize what mystics have, have been telling us for thousands of years. That is the true spirituality is listening to what to what mystics have been telling us, okay. which is what my um, the twelve laws of uh, self uh, realization is really about. I was really surprised when this kind of took off this, this article because I've done you know many articles, yeah. but this is the one that really just resonated and um, and I, I really because I thought who's going to care about self realization, you know, you know yeah. because people want just the basic one hundred and one. Yeah. Well, I think that now more than ever, you know, we we lived within a society that became so much about uh, perception and people being a false sense of their self for so many years. And in the social media age over the last 10 years, it became even more apparent. It was the fake facade to the world. And, yeah. and people are sick of it. And people are like, well, I want to be myself now, so how do I realize how to be myself? Because right. I've put on a show for the world to see. And you know, and you do, you know, have that kind of whole sense of there has to be more than Facebook likes and Instagram likes, you know, or you know, putting whatever up. And so I think that that's why the Huffington Post, that article became so popular, because I see it every day here. People, there, there's gotta be something, but they don't even know how to find themselves. But let's take it a step further, because I, you know, like I think that this is like a, a beautiful conversation that I'm curious about, you know, okay, so we take it, it, this might get a little deep for everybody, and if it does, we'll go a little back a little bit, but so, you know, you're saying it's the next step in spiritual evolution. It's like that beyond that yoga and meditation that kind of takes you into a more centered pointedness. And then you say, okay, well, now we're here for spiritual development or purpose or whatnot. Now, can I have your thought process on for what purpose is that spiritual development? Well, um, <laughs> so as, as I mentioned, we need to go back to, um, to what spirituality really is. Mm -hmm. um, because it's uh, based on steps of development, yes. right? If you and I were that talking, let's say at uh, in a at level two or three, we were just talking about how great yoga, how great yoga is. Maybe you want to become eat lighter food or whatever, and that's pretty much going to be the conversation. And in, at another five or ten levels, would be a little bit to become having more of a sense of yourself, having self awareness, being self aware is the key for, for, for growth. Now, when you get to the higher levels, mm -hmm. you have to tap into what mystics have been telling us about spirituality. And the message of mystics, these are not gurus, mystics, because gurus usually have an agenda of yeah. growth and you know getting followers and money and all that. One famously had 100 Rolls Royces and so forth. <laughs> but he was flaunting it. I actually liked him. There was a guru named uh, Rajneesh, he also went, went by Osho, who actually flaunted his, his well. He was the only honest guru out there. He, yeah. You know, it was like he, he didn't, yeah, he wanted money and he wanted to just give it to me and I show it off. There's was, a documentary on Netflix about <laughs> Osho, his yeah, real identity. He was the <laughs> only one that was really honest. But I'm talking about the mystics. So the message of mystics has been that it's very similar to, to the Matrix trilogy, the movie. Mm -hmm is that this planet is an illusion or, or a simulation or Maya. Yes. And that we are constantly being, uh, in a sense, uh, programmed to maintain our presence on this planet. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the core message, the core, uh, in a sense, uh, task or duty of a true spiritual person is to liberate himself or herself mm -hmm. from life and death on this planet. And the cycle of uh, life and death on this planet can be infinite because the planet is designed to maintain that. Literally, we're talking 
hundreds of thousands of years. So, so in, in just to simplify for those that are watching, like unplugging yourself from the matrix. You unplug, but okay. but 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 uh, yes, uh, you're exactly right. So the matrix was the reason it hit so hard. You know, matrix resonated with people on such a deep level, especially the first one, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, because people inherently or subconsciously are aware that there is something that just isn't right. Yeah. You know? So, and, but the message of Matrix is not to uh, liberate ourselves from this planet, is to get rid of the elements that are controlling yeah. this planet and turn this into more of a utopian, which is a perfectly valid argument, mm -hmm. right? Um, there are actually, there is a, a whole kind of a thought process behind that. Um, there are different uh, levels associated with different types of planets. I'm mm -hmm. going to go into it for a little while. Some people call planet Earth level zero mm -hmm. because it's exceedingly violent, right? It's it exceedingly narrow-minded. It exceedingly, uh, it relies on, on uh, superstition, on deception, on fraud. Like it's all yeah. negative, 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 negative. And the tiny percentage of trying to do good and trying to just be, you know. Like, yeah. So because of, but I don't believe in level zero. I think Earth is level one. But there are then level two, level three planets where it's a lot more, um, in a sense, conscience driven, mm -hmm. uh, where you don't have deception, where uh, there's almost no violence at all. So people try to kind of pursue their, their inner growth. But you have to graduate to those planets, mm -hmm. right? So this may sound a little bit out there for a lot of you listening, I mean, because some of you may not even believe in um, a possibility of life outside of planet Earth. So, that's another discussion, which we can get into at some point. But um, so basically, what mystics were, were telling us, the core message was that liberate yourself, and only you can liberate yourself from the constant um, uh, cycle of birth and rebirth on this planet. And you can do it through the process of self realization, which could be a long process. Um, at its shortest, if you're super eager, it could take a few lifetimes. But many of you have been on it already. If what Christina and I are talking about resonates with you, if it's triggering something in you, that means you've done this before. You're just trying to wrap it up because this is the right time for it. You know, you were talking about why this is a special moment, and I kind of segued into the 60s to set yeah. that up. But you know, 2,000 years ago was a very special moment. Okay. That was at the era of, of Jesus and so forth. Mm -hmm. But there were many prophets, yeah. many, and they were saying that Messiah is coming, and it was like a mass. It was a massive era of shift. Yeah. And about 800 years ago, around the time of Rumi, was a massive era of shift in uh, the West. Basically, Rumi was in Turkey, kind of okay. was in the West. He wasn't Turkish, but he lived. He moved from what's today Afghanistan, part of Persian Empire, to Turkey, and so he. He lived in Turkey. So, um, so that 13th uh, century where Rumi lived was a major, in a sense, a sh uh, an upgrade. We re the humanity, those who were in tune to it, obviously not yeah. everyone, they received an upgrade. 2,000 years, years ago received an upgrade, which was a very important message that uh, spirituality is not about blood sacrifice. Yeah. It's not about getting your knowledge from books. It's about tapping into yourself. Have a little bit of compassion is going to go far, you know. It's mm -hmm. simple. You have to keep it simple. It's two thousand years. They can't follow simple instructions. Yeah, follow simple <laughs> instructions. And thirteen hundred years ago with Rumi, I'm sorry, eight hundred years ago in the thirteenth century with Rumi, his message was earth shattering. That um, that it's there is no uh, you know father, uh, son, and Holy Ghost or a Holy Father, Holy Mother, and Holy Son which is a trilogy that's been used for a long time in religion, is that God lives in your heart as you. Very poetic yeah. message, but that's as far as you could go 800 years ago, right? Yeah. So what did Rumi do was he basically brought the outside deity, merged it in you, mm. unified it with you as a preparation for today's message that there is no outside deity, there is universal energy, of course, and it's the yeah. lo it's love energy, but you, in fact, are the deity. Yeah, I am that I am. Yes, yes. But I am yes. that I am. Yes, you are the deity. <laughs> that, that is the message, that is the next level, that you need to not just hear it or read it, but Integrate absorb it, it integrate it, but understand it, um, absorb it. 
um, accept the thought of it. Yeah, let <laughs> it really, they, yeah. really become part yeah, of it. Yeah, you know, so you really get it. So it's not just like reading something. It, it, you understand that, oh, I get it. So, and yes. And we've all had those moments where you hear something maybe a hundred different times, but then you hear it that one time and it just hits you. And there's something that happens where it's just like, ah, oh, like an aha happens. And so that's what Chief is talking about, getting that aha so it's integrated, it becomes you. There, um, uh, here's an interesting kind of analogy. Um, there is, you know, we, when, when a child is, is born, its entire life is in the hands of people who are, er, er, who are around her, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I say people because not of his parents. It, yeah. you know, there are millions of possibilities today, right? So it's completely helpless. It is totally in the hands of, of, of the caretakers. And they have to, and as the child grows, let's say it's like starts uh, crawling and walking, they have to be super careful that it doesn't fall off stairs, doesn't stick its you know, finger into some kind of an electric outlet or you know, their balconies or window. You have to constantly watch for this, for, for this little thing, right? Yeah. Because it can't take care of itself. And obviously what is eating, <laughs> obviously you have to be careful about what you're feeling. So almost entire, except for breathing and some movements, almost entire, yeah. right? That is, that keeps that analogy. And, um, and imagine uh, a soul being at that level. I'll call that a child's soul, mm. a child's spirit. So there are a lot of spirits that are on this planet that are child spirit, they're child souls, that they need, they need the comfort mm -hmm. of the temples, the variety of types of worship places, the deities, you know, like in India they have 650 different deities, or you know, we had you know, the Greeks and the, the old Persians, and obviously the Egyptians and the Romans and the this and that, of course now the the kind of the unified uh, trilogy of the uh, 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 religions, they claim to only have one deity, but Catholicism has a mother and a son, yeah. so that's a complete falsehood. Uh, so, so if you are a child spirit, you need that. If you're a child spirit, you want somebody to tell you, do this and do that. Do yeah. that. So when you become an adult spirit, which is you won't be able to have this conversation if you're not an adult spirit. Mm -hmm. You no longer need that. The same way that an adult individual no longer needs to be kept away from staircases yeah. or you know, a healthy adult individual, all that. You, just, you not only don't need to, but then you, you can take care of mm. other smaller people. It's the same exact analogy for spirituality. So there is growth both in physical, there is evolution, Clearly, in the physical universe, clearly, oh, of course. there is also evolution in the spiritual universe. So I call that universal spiritual hierarchy. Mm -hmm. So the level of spiritual growth is infinite. Yes. So the 12 laws um, are meant to get you to a place where, where, you, where you basically fall into a stage that I call self-guided destiny, where everything around you, you begin to... Uh, in a sense, not only become aware, but you begin to, in a sense, control, and you get to control your own your own destiny. So you're no longer uh, manipulated or programmed by a variety of types of uh, negative energies that are out there that are feeding on you, actually. Yeah, and and so you were saying that this time, in this space right now, is very important because it's that beyond that new age. Can you elaborate? Because we kind of cut off and went a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, so you were saying, yeah. Yeah, so, so the, so the, the uh, time of Rumi is very important. 60s is crucial because although it was whatever, big and chaotic, but everything great starts with a bang. Of course. Right? You know, the day starts with a gorgeous sunrise and a gorgeous sunset. Uh, especially in LA when it's cooler, the sunsets get really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it never really fails. If uh, Nothing big is going to start with like a whimper. So it's good to have that. We had that big bang of spirituality in the 60s, right? But it was really meant to get us to this point. So this is a point primarily due to technology as well. Mm -hmm. The fact that we are now our own entertainers. 
I, th I think YouTube is probably one of the greatest inventions of all time because we are in <laughs> we are entertaining ourselves and we are so good at it. You know, it's like, what is it you do that's so good? Whatever it is, you don't have to go and be judged by some corporations to see if you yeah. can be allowed to have a mic, right? Yeah. You just put it out there and see how people react to it. And uh, share the wisdom, right? Yeah. And so like this is being shared right now and it'll be uploaded on YouTube that right. you can, you know, where we didn't have that. So you basically, Christian, you kind of tapped into it when you said that we are, um, we are kind of waking up Mm -hmm. We're waking up that it been there been almost too much pressure has been put on us to look a certain way, to kind of say certain things, to to you know behave in a way that in a very uh, conventional ways, and now we are breaking we're breaking out of it. We're actually, breaking out of it in a big way because we are in many ways challenging a lot of very established uh, systems that have been around for thousands of years. I mean, marriage was one, but that was already ten years ago. Yeah. Right. When we shook, we, you know, when we shook yeah. that up for ten years ago. But there are a lot of other. Even gender is now kind of becoming gender fluid. Is becoming a very normal thing, um, as far as conversation is concerned. Yeah. So we are shaking and changing, and this is, it's radical. You know, we have a recorded history of about six thousand years, six to seven thousand years, right? This particular generation of humanity that we belong to. None of this was really, in many ways, going on. Yes, you know, the Romans had they were they were big partiers, or Egyptians, were, but this level of openness yeah. that we have uh, is an indication that one of the uh, one of the indicators of the special time that we are in. This, but so the, the key reason for that is there is an energy wave that's supporting it. This mm. would not have this would not happen. This level of um, upgrading. Okay. That's happening to us would not happen if there wasn't an, a supportive wave. So there is. So the universe, in a sense, is pushing us. Is pushing us to say, you know what, you guys done well. You know, you're in a planet that's level one, right? You yeah. are like at the bottom of the pit, <laughs> crawling through six feet of mud. Yet quicksand. You, <laughs> quicksand. Yet you manage to do what you do, bro, was nothing harder than this, right? Um, well, yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't the planetary systems want to keep a, a tar planet, so to say, say, like, you know, the mud and the quicksand? Because, you know, if people evolve and then you evolve and you upgrade and go to another planet, I mean, we're getting out there, but, you know, um, it, you know, Ken, this is this is a question that I have for you that I, I, I go back and forth. I mean, I sit up at night thinking about these things. But um, so if we are supposed to evolve and that there's this planetary like shift or whatnot, I always go back to for what purpose, right? Because if everything is good and bad is all good for the development of the soul, then why is there a need for it to change, right? And why is it all changing right now? Not unless I go into the space of saying, well, maybe there's an off balance. Like you talked about these negative eaters that feed off of you and that if the system is off balance and we swayed a little bit to the negative polarity, does the planet need to go back into its harmony equilibrium? I don't know. I'm just a food for thought. No, no. Okay. So this, this, all, makes, this all makes perfect sense. Okay. So the, 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 the key things to, remember, to understand is that we are children of, of this universe. Yes. And because we are children, and there are m many other universes that are different laws in different universes, but we are children of this universe. The law of this particular universe, and I do not know the law of other universes, but the law of this particular universe is that you rock. Hmm. That whatever you want, you get. That is the law of this universe. The universe will provide whatever it is you feel you need if you've earned it. Right? Mm, that means yes. you have to have, I, I, the phrase that I use is clarity of intention. But yeah. you have to get up there to be able to have that clarity of intention, mm -hmm. rather than not knowing whatever you want is already programmed. So you have to distinguish between what's being programmed with you through entertainment industry, uh, you know, entire entertainment or wh what have you, magazines, fashion, and so forth, versus what is it that you want. Yeah. So when you have clarity of intention, you want to do things. Shouldn't there be venues for you to, to, to do things? Yeah. 
those venues are, are, are available. So there is no limit in, 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 what, in what you can do or, or, where you can, or where you can go. So Unimus is not going to tell you, I'm sorry, I only have two levels. It's either Earth or like this other place that's kind of, uh, it's got some nice beaches. No, it, it's not like that. It's yeah. literally, I call it uh, uh, universal spiritual hierarchy. It's an infinite hierarchy of opportunities based on however far you, you can grow. Is there a place for planet uh, Earth, like a level one planet? Yes, yeah. because new souls have to be born somewhere. Yeah. They have to go through the process. And then, you know, it's uh, almost all of us, we start at a point where we may have been deeply religious at some mm -hmm. point because we didn't, you know, that's, that was, as a child spirit, that's all you needed, you know? Yeah. And then we gradually upped uh, that game. So is there a need for planet Earth? Yes, are there other planets? Yes, I am certain of it. I yeah. think like one of, um, um, I think there are even crazier places where it's almost like a Star Wars scene when you have all the species all carrying guns, like in a <laughs> hyper violent but multi-species, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I'm sure everything has yeah, to exist. You know, but it's, you know, it's like an old west but set in you know, some of the galaxy or whatever. Um, so, um, yeah, so there's need for planet, but there's no need for us to get stuck here because there's a lot more out there. Yeah, of course, there's a lot more out there. But, like, let's uh, take it uh, uh, to elaborate a little bit more on it. Like, a lot of people, when they enter into the spiritual journey and they, and they go into self-realization, let's say, or that, that aim towards it, because I could take, as you said, many lifetimes, um, one of the things is, is that the understanding that everything is divinely perfect. But there is this huge also pull within our planet Earth to make severe changes about how we are currently consuming, operating, um, uh, violence, decay, like everything of, of where that the, the problems that make us, you know, these lower levels of humans. Right. And, and there's this there's this pull towards a lot of individuals that feel like they're called to save the ocean or they're called to do this sure. and that. But when you get onto the like higher levels of spiritual thought, you're like, well, everything has its place and everything in its place and it's this training mechanism, right? So. Can you tell me a little bit on your thoughts well, on that? Listen, um, I, you know, as I explained, it's a nano percent who can have this conversation, all right? So uh, the, the, the way the planet Earth, it, you know, we have seven and a half billion people on this planet, and there are, it's infinite. You could populate this planet with 100 billion, and, because it's not going to stop. Nothing yeah. is going to stop it unless it, something big happens, right? So, uh, so meaning is that there is no limit for the number of spirits and souls that want to come to this planet. So, you know, it's perfectly noble to feel that, hey, I want to uh, change this planet. It's a perfectly noble uh, thing to feel that our, our oceans are too acidic or too much mercury, whatever the case may be, too much plastic. It's all noble, right? But it's not what self realization is mm -hmm. about. But it, an aspect of it is to become is to become aware. An aspect of it is to care. And you may go through a period where you are fanatical about these things. Mm -hmm. But that's just an, that's just one of the steps yeah. out of out of out of twelve. And also getting off this planet is extremely difficult because there is a I there, you know like we talked about simulation, the matrix simulation. There are three layers of simulation. Uh, one is a dreamland, which we are very familiar with. Uh, although some people, uh, actually a big chunk of population don't remember their dreams at all. They think mm. they don't dream, but everybody dreams. Yeah. But people who are more aware, they, they do remember. So we are really, in essence, talking to dreamers because you remember your dreams, and many of you dream every night. Um, so dreamland, you could assign five or six different reasons for it. There are Psycho their psychological uh, reasons, the Freudian, Jungian, and all that, and they all have their place. But one of the reasons for dreaming is for your spirit, for your consciousness, and, sh and for your mind to let you know that there, you are in a simulation. So here it is a simple simulation. Like every night, it puts you in a simple, si simple simulation where things are completely illogical. Like like last night, I was uh, I was driving a car, I pulled into some, it was like a showroom, like a display was gonna, it was a classic car, was gonna put on display. 
Then I had to turn it around. So I just stood up in, in, like, in the middle of the car, stood up. I picked it up like it was like, like, a, the Flintstones. like a Flintstones car. I rotated it to position it. Face, but your mind doesn't say, hey, that's illogical. Or, you know, you're doing, no, it's perfectly fine. You know, and then you wake up three minutes later. You say, oh, that was interesting. So, you, it, so it's a very simple reminder that how tricky simulation can be. That even though it's illogical, makes no sense, um, you know it, you know that, uh, and you've done it such a long time, but your mind can can tell most yeah. of the time. Um, so that's one level. That is a training level. The second level is the greater uh, planet that tries to constantly, in a sense, um, limit you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the job of this planet Earth to keep you down. Otherwise, it really won't function the way it is. It's been functioning for, for a few hundred years. And the third level is actually, I'm very sorry to say, but it's afterlife. Because mm -hmm. afterlife is a third level. Uh, it is a simulation or a, or a projection based on your energy level, your energy output, your, yeah. your, uh, your desires, and basically your wishes. So it creates an almost... A, an optimistic or basically an ideal hologram and uh, to pull you back. So the hologram, uh, so one of the things I'm going to just... Uh, Interesting. I, I want to interject one thing here. So the mystics told us three things. This planet is a simulation, don't have attachments, and get off this planet ASAP, right? These are the three core messages. So attachment falls into this level well, of the third, the third, of the third level. It is extremely easy. That's why I told you nano percent can accomplish what you and I are talking about. Mm -hmm. right? It is definitely doable, especially at this time, because people are ripe. If you are, uh, especially if you are a millennial or Generation Z, especially uh, listening to this, and you are hooked of uh, in, internally, soul on a, your soul level of what Christina and I are, are talking about, you are primed for actually achieving self-realization in this in this life. So, third layer, the uh, afterlife, super easy. You have attachments. Oh, I love that family I just have. My God, I have so much love for them. Um, oh, I want to become more famous. Hey, I you know my music career was going pretty good. I know now I, I've learned the business. I can do it. You know, it's just I want to save the planet. I want to, you know, just whatever. I tried this, now I want to try that. Um, it's and never I want to serve my Lord. Never ending. Which there is, is like a thousand different reasons that, that they hook you on because your energy, look, everything you are is already very much known, right? Mm -hmm. to, 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 to the, in a sense, to the universal energy. So it, it's, there's no um, opaque, there is yeah. really no boundaries. It's all very, very transparent. And actually, one of the beautiful things about level two and level three existence is the fact that there is no deception, mm. meaning, if you and I would meet on that level, you would pretty much know everything about my essence of, of who I am, how I am, the way I am. Yeah. And I, and I would know whatever you are, the way you are. It's all good, but we may not want to hang out, or we may want to hang out, but it's all good because whatever. <laughs> it's yeah, because you, you get, yeah, yeah you just, there's but, no attachment. Yeah, there's level. no. So, um, so, third layer is really the hardest. In a sense. Which, you know, makes me think of something to, you know, maybe this will help some people realize that this even happens in our lifetime. It's like, think about when you want to change something and you make a decision and you're had enough and whether you want to end that relationship or you want to quit your job. And those are the times when the boss brings you in and gives you a good positive review or that person that you're dating starts being super uber <laughs> loving to you. And it's right, like, yeah. so we've seen this have this effect of like, do you really want it? Yeah. You know, it's almost like if you really want this change, are you going to like look at we're putting a little like, you know, um, bait in front of you and yeah. saying, OK, every everything's better now. Everything, everything that you were complaining about is fixed. Do you yes. still want to step away? Right. And so that's kind of I think the same thing that you're saying in this level three. It's like, OK, you can graduate and move beyond this or imagine this lifetime. Yeah, they, they, they will not tell you you can graduate. Well, what? You would, you yeah, would well. say, oh, I know this game, I'm out of here. So one of the, I think four or five 
uh, steps becomes about self-awareness and self-acceptance. They're kind of back to back. Self-awareness and self-acceptance self where you just naturally want to be yeah. the most beautiful that you can be. Yeah. Just as you are, but the most beautiful version of the way you are. Not trying to put kind of beauty as like a benchmark or anything, but beautiful is a is a very in a general term that that could mean a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. right? Doesn't mean that Victoria's Secret be, uh, beautiful, whatever. Yeah. Beautiful. And, that's and, that's and, going and, away, by the way. That's and, the biggest thing that's going away. And you're doing it for you. You're doing it for and you. Yeah. So that's where you'll know the distinction. I think for those that you know, like it's like if you're if you're doing it because you want to get recognition, so those people that are going to the gym or doing this or whatever, if we're taking the Victoria's Secret thing, they're they're on it for the um, the validation of others, right? But when they eat right and they exercise just for the validation of their self, that's what you're talking about. And there's nothing wrong with doing any of that. There's nothing wrong to being super, you know, fit, uh, super everything. I'm all for it because yeah, part absolutely. Of the, yeah, so but when it's for yourself, yeah, yeah. When you're so not one of one of the one of the lessons of of the twelve laws is that it is not uh, a doctrine. We're not telling you what to do. We're certainly not doing judging you whatsoever. It's just a process that, because it's not even about me, and certainly not about Christina, right? It's not mm -hmm. about anybody. It's not about some book you read. You, it's all about you, internally you have to come to a place where you want to constantly move forward spiritually. And you can't do this if you are trying to be somebody else. And it's perfectly natural. You're going to go, everybody goes through that phase. Even people who are eventually will become, you know, self realized. It is the part of the process of a child soul becoming adult soul. And this doesn't happen in mere years. Yeah. Right? So it's everything you do is, it's, as long as, you know, it's perfectly fine. Uh, as long as it's, you know, if, if it's personally affecting me, obviously, yeah. uh, that's a different story. But, um, uh, so did that part, I think some people may, like some people who are watching this um, or hearing this may think, wait a minute, but if I do that, are, are these guys, are Shiva and Christina going to judge me? Because like at night at 2, 2 a.m. and nobody's watching, I'm, I'm doing that. No, because yeah, really. you're, a, you're on your own journey. <laughs> yeah. You're the only one seeing through your eyes, exactly. you know, like thinking with your mind and this is your, your body, this is your soul's journey, right? You exactly know, like, right. But there comes a point where you ask yourself, what more? And then there comes a point when you continue to shed away certain elements of attachment that have been. And that's what you're saying right. within these, these steps and uh, these laws that are there. Um, what is your, what do you think is one of the most challenging laws? Like, you know, if we look at it as like uh, stuff. Yeah, I, I would have to be self-love. Self-love. Yeah, because that is the one on this planet that's toughest because everything is stacked against you. Because uh, you may, uh, a lot of people do jobs they hate and that reflects on how they feel about themselves, or they may not, you know, like certain things about their their physicality that reflects a, you know on their selves. They may be in situations where. Um, they're not being being supported by people who are around them, and that reflects. It's a very very tough law, a tough law. Um, that's why it's you know it's, I think it's ten. It is really right up there, and it, all, all the work is you know you kind of when you get to self love, then it then it then 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 the roller coaster becomes <laughs> you know a lot a lot easier because you've you've really you've you've understood you've you've got what the matrix is about. You, you really understood all that, and now it's your time. Now you can really shine, uh, and you can just speed up your progress. Mm. It's very difficult. It's very difficult when you're, uh, for somebody who, um, um, anyways, I already mentioned it, but abusive relationships, all of that affect how you feel about yourself. Yeah. Uh, it, really, relationships especially, right? Especially if, uh, but you feel strongly about someone and you're together and you get rejected. Yeah. It makes you feel... So these are all, you know, very real, very real uh, emotional 
uh, things that affect how our people are. That's why the process is very difficult. Yeah, and if they grew up in a family that maybe didn't give them as much of that love and support as they're a little infant running around, you know, their needs maybe weren't met completely and fully. And so then there's some healing process that needs to be done around that, right? Well, you just tapped into <laughs> something really, really big. Uh, I call that childhood programming. Mm -hmm. Childhood programming is uh, the biggest hindrance uh, to spiritual growth, the biggest. Wow. When you see, uh, for example, uh, a, um, a highly successful, let's, you know, a highly successful, extremely popular, established person who express, I don't want to say name names because any name you say, half of the group are going to hate, half are going to love. Yeah. So no names. So, but somebody very famous, very established, highly <laughs> respected in the entertainment field, when they tell you that they, they go to therapy still, you know, twice a week because they can't get over about how their mother, you know, thing. Yeah. Half of Hitchcock movies, who yeah. in my opinion is the greatest film director of our time, he was, I call him the Buddha of cinema, right? Because he worked from the silent era to 1970s, nonstop. Half of his movies are about, are about mother issues. Mm. The famous Psycho is the ultimate mother issue of all time, yeah. you know? So, but even even in in the birds, both the, the 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 male lead and the female lead have mother issues. The female lead, as soon as the male lead says, "So, to tell me about your mother," she jumps back like three feet and yells, <laughs> "My mother!" Well, and then she's like, "That's that is perfect explanation of of um, of childhood programming." Yeah. Childhood programming is. Um, Probably going to be, I think that is related to self love because they're both in a very, well, huge, co very, yeah. very close together. You need to be able to get out of your childhood programming. Unfortunately, if you're listening to this, it's usually the upper levels of the laws are are you know are going to not going to be in in, in your in, in 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 your range if you haven't tapped into your childhood program and having accepted, you don't have to forgive. It's not about for, it's not about just forgiving. It's kind of understanding the process and moving on. Yeah. And using whatever that may have been as a tool. So as a that tool now becomes and, and appreciation, right? Because it, we live in a world of duality. And so right. If for every negative there was some positive, there was some strong suit or different type of learning that, or even just an aspect of you, you wouldn't have been, you wouldn't have become the same person if you didn't go through whatever you went through. Right. And so that's the self acceptance, right? And part of self acceptance, you have to accept who your parents were were perfect for you or the the needs that weren't fulfilled were perfect because they gave you these other strengths or whatever that is yeah they they were perfect for for the time exactly yeah, i don't yeah, i don't believe uh, neg uh, if negativity is ever perfect but yes well, yeah they're perfect for the time but but yeah so this childhood programming is um is really big um i call the reason i said it's not about for forgiveness because you know i use a term i call emotional ammunition so your your you um, process of liberation cannot happen without experience. Yeah. I mean, you can't just you know la di da yourself to life and be liberated. Not going to happen. So the experience that you have is going to give you that. So that's what yeah. really you mean is that even though it may have been negative, but it it gave you. You that. need some form of yeah. friction in order yes. to move forward. Yes. You yes. know, yes. friction. That is exactly the right word. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. It is not possible. Actually, growth is not possible without without friction. Exactly. Yeah. So we need that, and people yeah. sometimes. And form so then much it gets to a point that it, that yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but on on this level, it's not possible. But friction is not always yeah. necessary. Yeah. But you're absolutely correct. On this level, you know, we have like so many phrases in our day in our daily lives, such as no pain, no gain, and things like that. Yeah. And there, there's a, there's a reason for what that. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Yeah. You know, and, and like there was like a popular song on that. Yeah. So. Uh, Friction is uh, is really important, but it's also important not always. You know, don't be a pushover. You know, don't yeah. always say, "Okay, it's okay." You know, I, I'm, I'm, 
Well, then that's not friction. That becomes passiveness, right? Thank you. Because if you say, "Oh, it's okay," then you're like this. You're you're going with the flow. Right. You're not pushing against it. Exactly. You so use it as as you know what I just called uh, you know uh, as an emotional ammunition. Now it gives you it just bumps you up to a level that a lot of people may 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 not have have access to. You know, like another phrase that I use is that if your life has been a picnic. Good for you, you know. Yeah. It's fine. It's you know, it's perfectly fine. But you, you know, as far as uh, kind of spiritual growth and things like that, um, it they kind of don't go, don't go hand in uh, hand. You know, hand in hand. Because if if you look at just the history of of you know people who have kind of achieved this and kind of shared it, um, you know, one of the biggest things about Rumi, the, the, his most famous quote is to rise above good and bad. Mm -hmm. right? There's a place you know of, out, outside of good and bad, uh, which is it's so incredibly brilliant. It is timeless, and the fact that he said it 800 years ago is. Um, is remarkable, yeah. you know? Because, because so there, what is good and bad? It's it's right. light and dark. You can't, you know, like a photography, like in, in photography when you take a picture, <coughs> you need the right aperture. Too much light in, blows out the picture, not <laughs> right. enough light, and right. makes it really dull. And right. it's like, that's all we're dealing with, right? Is we're dealing with this duality of giving, <coughs> it, you know, the darkness illuminates the light and the light gives contrast and we can create the swirl of like, I mean, the pictures of the universe and the dark and the light swirls that go on, that's the reality of what we're living in here. And that's above that. That's yeah. like that's no longer attributing evil and 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 devils and angels or this or that. That's saying, okay, well, there's there's contrast. Let's let's just call no, it contrast. Exactly. No, exactly. I mean, this this is this is a planet of uh, this is a planet of duality. I mean, this planet is so messed up uh, uh, psychologically is that even though they have created gods mm -hmm. who are supposed to be all powerful, omnipotent, omniscient. Blah, 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 blah. But yet, yet, like in a soap opera, they have an evil twin <laughs> yeah. who is equally, uh, you know, powerful. And he, he's like trying to, uh -huh. it's like, really? <laughs> so this is... Then, then they use the fear tactics and the uh, different oh, things. Oh, yeah, the and fear it's, tactics. Oh. Is, 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 is that, but it's, it's a big seller on this planet. Oh, yeah. The fear, the fear is, is, is a constant, is a constant. Uh, it works. Uh, you know, fear really works. Um, so division within... Humanity is what kind of the current machine that runs the planet. It works on the on the divisions. Uh, will it change? Um, it's very difficult because um, you know we don't have to talk about the physical world because we're good with spirituality. Yeah. That yeah. that's a whole other conversation around changes but, to the planet. You know, which I think that there are changes happening, but that'll be right. another another yeah. podcast. Yeah. Podcast. Yeah, that's, that's that, I think that yeah. that'll be a very in depth. Uh, so. Getting back on to, you know, so when somebody comes, like, because you teach and mentor too, you know, right. um, and so not only, let's say somebody reads your article and they fall in love with your work and they want more from you, you know, like what, what are the next steps that you help take them through to help on some of those 12 laws? Well, um, well, the there are two things here. With the twelve laws, the article that, that I wrote was meant to be uh, an overview because yeah. I devote one paragraph to each law. So um, I am planning to turn that into a book. So I'm okay. going to expand on each of the twelve laws. Um, it could be as early as 2019. Um, so they will they will get. And the second thing is to do more uh, workshops. I kind of. Um, Stopped doing events for a while because I was so focused on on writing. Yeah. But and also I was looking for the next thing because I've been doing I've done rooming for such a long time, um, and um, and I was um, in a sense kind of I actually went through my own process of in course. the past few years of re rediscovering who I am in a sense where I am, and. Um, and everything that I learned about sharing Rumi for such a long, at a very high level for such a long time, and um, and the fact that what I learned from him was constantly push yourself forward, and you know don't get attached, understand the the like we talked about mm -hmm. the duality is not about this you know this party or that party or this type of person that it really is about yourself and 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 regardless of because he was very unconventional, yeah. extreme he could get away with it though because he was super famous. And very powerful and wealthy on top of it. A very interesting character. 
but he was extremely on on unconventional. So all of that kind of, you know, I, I, it was it what became very much a part of who I am. And then my, as a, and because I am a seeker of truth and I mm-hmm. have been a seeker of truth, which is a extremely um, uh, precious commodity on this planet. Yeah. Um, so what has come out of that, out of kind of, um, in a sense, my own pro- process of self discovery at, at this level that I am was um, how to help people uh, in a sense become aware mm-hmm. or how to make people become aware but rather than helping them just making them become aware yeah. of the next levels of spirituality uh, because it, it, as we talked very early on is that New Age has done what it was supposed to and it wasn't meant to last forever it lasted about 30 years that's a very long time and now we are at a post new age or we're at a soul evolution. I like to use the term soul evolution. So you're at a soul evolution level where we just kind of, we, you know, we thank new age and all of that stuff, we use some of it, and then we take to a much higher level that is totally self-based. It's completely outside influence free. Yeah. That's the simplest way that, that I can put it. I this like is very that. difficult for people. It's not easy. People are used to, you know, worshiping, uh, okay. bowing, like having a picture of like a deity in their wallet mm-hmm. makes them feel like, you know, they're protected. So these are very difficult steps for, for, for people to move from. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But it's uh, changing the collective. And the more you plant little seeds and the more that it becomes more acceptable. Because right. at one point in time, like yoga wasn't acceptable, right? And now it's like you see a yoga shop at every, it's you know, like, you know, you know, it's yeah. mainstream. Meditation is now mainstream. There's other things that are like these, these thoughts or these different ways of being. Um, you know, it's part of the process of inf- influ- uh, infiltrating that into society. Like even, like you said, gender fluidity and, you know, divorce is now more, you know, like all of these things yes. as we, no, we start is, to shift. Yeah. And not just in America, but all over the world. These are all huge. I mean, divorce, yeah. you know, for us is, is obviously, is, you go back 50 years ago. Yeah. And it, it was so it was, like shamed. It was earth. It was earth shattering. I mean, many cultures yeah, still is today, but but but, but, in, but the, a, in the West we're talking about the a US. Lot, yeah. Yeah. So um, so my aim is that what I really like to do now is because I um, I feel like that kind of self um, um, uh, kind of the process of self uh, analyzing and my self process that I was involved in for a few years that it's kind of. It did what it was supposed to, and I feel that the, the 12 laws is the right direction for me to move forward. So what I like to do is that basically do uh, more, uh, do more events, keep doing more events, and um, which is having one here on yeah. December 12th. So if you're inspired, and hopefully we can have them again beyond in the new year, but you know, yeah, sure, that's that's amazing. Yeah, and if you had to leave people with, well, first off, backtrack a minute. Where can people find you? Um, I'm actually very easy to find on, on, online because I've been, I've been <laughs> active for a very long time. Um, uh, one place is my full name, uh, which is Sharam Shiva, but if you have a problem, if you even just type some of it, the rest just pops up in search. But um, I have had uh, Rumi Network uh, for very, since the beginning of the web, really. Um, so that's another place to find me. That's much easier to find online. Is that roomynetwork.com? No, it's just roomy.net. Oh, okay. So but that's like, the, you know, as far as like typing the least number of characters, <laughs> just if you just go to roomy.net, they'll be going to, you know, learn a little bit about Rumi, especially Rumi's untold story, which um, is something that um, I released after decades, you know, many, many years of research on Rumi. Uh, that people don't don't know about him. All the all the you know just little interesting details and some of the controversies about his life. So, uh, but there um, there's a contact page so you can and then there are links to social media and so forth. So either my full name dot com, which is sharamshiva dot com, or rumi dot net, r u m i dot net. Thank you, and leaving everybody with one last bit of wisdom. What would it be? Oh, I think the last bit of wisdom is that um, you are not being judged. This is um, this is this is really the, the I think on this planet this is probably 
one of the biggest uh, messages that I can put you that um, you are, um, regardless of how we view ourselves on a physical level, you know, occupying these shells, uh, internally your spirit is one of the highest elements in this universe. Mm -hmm. It is exceedingly precious because physicality without spirit is also possible. You mean, you didn't know that, did you? For you, you can run on instinct the same way eventually we're going to have androids that run on instinct, but they're not, they don't have a soul. So physicality mm. without spirit is possible. Reproduction without spirit is possible. But because us humans, what makes us special is our, this amazing spirit that we have. And that's the one that's constantly kind of nagging at you that, hey, you could be better. Hey, you could do this differently. Yeah. So if this inspires you, you know, definitely I would encourage everybody to read Shiva's article and join us on December 12th to learn more. Um, and we'll keep this conversation going. Definitely it's something that we'll have them back on because I've really enjoyed this conversation. Well, thank you. Today. Me too. Me too. This was really heartfelt. It's Me beautiful. Too. Yeah. So join us next time, and if you like this video, please let us know by liking it, leaving a comment. It really helps the ratings uh, so more people can find uh, Liberate the Podcast. Thank you.